There we go. Let's get it going. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Monday, March 28, 2011. We might have the soundtrack once again. My wife is playing her music as she gets ready. Uh, but I didn't really notice much bleed over from the last show. So if you hear a little music, fine. Soundtrack to the show. If not, no big deal because we're here to talk about manufactured homes and, and other things too, of course. Welcome to the Manufactured Home Show, everybody. And we're brought to you by ManufacturedHomeMart.com, the premier online store for manufactured housing. Go on there, sell your manufactured home, look for a mobile home to buy. Or if you're in the business, get on there and advertise your business. I guarantee you won't be sorry. ManufacturedHomeMart.com, the best place for manufactured homes on the web. Trust me. Now then, I want to wish a happy birthday one more time. Things that happened over the weekend we'll talk about. It was my wife's birthday on Saturday. This whole segment <laughs> would have been a lot funnier if she was in here, um, but she's not. She's getting ready, so it's not going to be quite as entertaining as I, as I thought. But as I said, her birthday was on Saturday. We had a nice celebration, went to the Texas Roadhouse. It was good. Expensive, but good. And also, the thing that I really want to talk about is the fact that for her birthday, she let me know that what she wanted to have was an Apple MacBook laptop computer notebook. And I'm not an Apple person. I'm predisposed to hate Apple, actually. And it's not that Apple is bad. It's not. It's just that, uh, well, I've gotten used to using the PCs, and that's how it is. And all my computers that I have right now are PCs. So my wife wants to throw a monkey in the wrench and get an Apple product. And I tried and tried and tried to convince her to get a different type, just a regular laptop, not Apple. Nope, wouldn't have it. She had, she wanted it. So, of course, my wife, she, she gets what she wants out of me just about every time. So I bought the Apple MacBook. Uh, I'll let you guys know how it goes. And uh, I want to I'm anxious to try to play with it uh, and, and see if I like it. But... I'm very angry about the Apple. Uh, very expensive. We could have bought two laptops for the price of that um, Apple laptop. <laughs> the, the MacBook Pro. We'll see how good it is. And it doesn't come with, the, that's the thing that bothered me too, is it didn't come with the, the suite of Office software. Um, it, it comes with uh, whatever it comes with, but it, uh, it, it, it's stuff to, for photos and you know how Apple is, but no, no office software comes with it. If you want that, you got to buy it. And right away, I was like, nice. So anyway, I also bought a new printer. You can see my old printer sitting there. My Canon served me well. I'm actually going to try to fix it. Now I got myself a new HP uh, wireless printer. We'll see how that thing works. Got to have a printer here at the homestead for doing some work and kids printing out their stuff. Kids went back to school today. <laughs> back to school after two weeks off of spring break. Um, let's move on to more exciting things other than my, my computer woes and my wife's birthday. Now, if you're an NCAA basketball fan in Arizona, now you're sad because the U of A lost. Um, they played great. They lost by two points. And, uh, Great run, Wildcats. UV Wildcats, way to go. Uh, the other surprise is VCU. Wow, VCU made it to the Final Four. They beat Kansas. Um, quick note about the Phoenix Suns as well. They lost. They're out. They're not going to make the playoffs. It, it would be a stunning miracle if they made the playoffs. They finally did start Gortat. Alvin Gentry started him, but too little too late. They lost to Dallas last night. It's not looking good. All right, so anyway, we had a good weekend. And uh, saw some March Madness basketball, Phoenix Suns. Not much else. It was a working weekend, definitely. We we spent the weekend working, and I'll, I'll get to that in a moment. A couple of pop culture type things that I read this morning. It looks like, looks like Prince William has his bachelor party. And everybody is upset that it wasn't like a, like a big deal. As though like they're supposed to party like it's 1999, perhaps. But basically, USA Today or whoever is reporting on this is saying that it was very mellow, 
And it was nothing like, the, the end sentence of this article cracked me up. With uh, Prince Harry and nightclub owner Guy Pelly in charge of festivities, blah, blah, they expected a juicy party uh, like those from cousin Peter Phillips' bachelor party in 2009. At that stag do, William reportedly arrived by Royal Air Force helicopter, drank heartily, and even dropped his pants. Well, how scandalous. How scandalous. None of that. There was none of that this time. Oh, no. We're going to be prim and proper, so there was no debauchery. <laughs> Too bad. Um, also, I, I like to watch, watch Keeping Up with the Kardashians, but it shocks me. Wait, let me go back. That this guy, you see this guy, Scott Disick, is on the cover of Men's Fitness. This is the only magazine that I get. And I happen to watch Keeping Up with the Kardashians, mostly because my wife takes control of the television from time to time. And I don't mind because, well, you know, the girls aren't ugly on there. So anyway, uh, <laughs> we're watching it last night. Here's the funny thing about this guy, Scott. I, I mean, I don't claim to know the guy, whatever. You know, they got a persona on TV, so whatever. But he, he kind of seems like a schmuck. He comes on strong. In the last episode that we were watching last night, he hires an assistant and then proceeds to torment the guy. And then, and then he winds up quitting. And then he hires him back. And then the guy basically, t the assistant guy tells him to stuff it one more time. And he winds up, winds up quitting anyway. So I know I couldn't work for this guy. And it's pretty funny because he's not buffed at all. But by his own admission, he's like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not buffed. But yeah, I mean, geez, I can be on it. Let me show you. There. The guns. Boom. You can't get a good look at that. I'm ripped. <laughs> Showing my farmer's. Show my farmers, Dan. <laughs> All right, way to go, Scott Disick. In other news, Reese, Reese Witherspoon got married. I saw that. Reese Witherspoon is cute except for the, the chin. I'm not, you know, I'm not somebody that should really be critiquing people, you know, being overly critical of people's appearance. But Reese Witherspoon is really hot except for the – she's got the really pointy chin. Makes me want to do that bewitch thing, you know, with, with the chin. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> uh, what else am I going to say? Oh, the bre one more thing, and, and, and I'll be done with pop culture news. Brett Michaels is suing CBS. For those of you who don't know who Brett Michaels is, I thought it was an interesting story. Let me bring that up real quick. I won't read the whole thing, but basically, Brett Michaels, former lead singer of Poison, which was like a, you know, a pop metal band from the 80s and early 90s. Now... And he's been on reality shows. Brett Michaels was the lead singer. But he got hit when he was doing some, some kind of, uh, he was doing the Tony Awards. And he got hit by something like a stage prop or something, hit him in the head, and he had a brain hemorrhage, and he almost died. So now he's suing him. And this is what the lawsuit states. I thought this was, this was incredible. Through his sheer will to live, to see his children grow up, Michaels was able to survive this trauma. Let me tell you though, man, from what I understand in reading this article, it's pretty hardcore. They dropped a piece of the stage on Brett's head and instead of doing the right thing, joked about it and played it off for ratings. That's the attorney talking. Anyway, you can read that article. Uh, I'm reading this. Uh, this is an Associated Press, Anthony McCartney. Uh, Brett Michaels, Sue CBS, for sure. Good luck, buddy. I hope he wins, too. I'm not much of a lawsuit guy, but you know what? When stuff like that happens and they won't take responsibility, CBS has got more money than God. And I know that they're notoriously cheap and they love to crucify people. They need to take care of that guy. Here's my editorial on former uh, pop guys who get their head crushed by a stage prop. I want to talk about manufactured homes. Let's get on to our topic for manufactured homes for today. I want to talk about open houses. The reason I decided to talk about open houses is because I sort of have a thing against them. And, and, and now, after the events of this weekend, I have to say I have a new appreciation for the art of the open house. Everybody who's in um, the sales side of manufactured homes, perhaps if you're in a community or um, if you're a dealer, 
you know what it's like to stage an open house. Maybe you know what it's like to experience both a successful and unsuccessful open house. And really, you know, sometimes it's just the luck of the draw. But I have to say, when it goes good, a, a, a properly executed open house is the very, very best thing for business. Um, I'm the type of guy that cannot sit in one place uh, twiddling my thumbs with nothing to do. My wife, on the other hand, can sit there and play crossword puzzles until the end of time. I would have to have a computer at my open house. But those of you who can amuse yourselves in the downtime between customers, open houses are good ideas. And I'm going to admit that because <laughs> I've, been, I've been rather anti-open house in my career of selling. And I have to say, um, once again, I'm keeping myself open to try and different things. Open houses is nothing new, uh, especially uh, in, in the world of manufactured housing. We do this, we do this all the time. But um, the fact is, is that I, I have not been a big open house guy, but I definitely see the effectiveness. And um, ours uh, was successful over the weekend. My wife did a great job. So, and she worked on her birthday. Yay. So when you do open houses, there's good ways and bad ways to do it. I think you need to promote it, support it, you know, a few days in advance, whatever you're going to do, some type of advertising. Internet advertising is what I use to get the word out there for, for the open house. Um, you know, decorating, you know, putting up flags or banners, different things. Of course, you got to have your signs out leading to, um, to your open house from the, from the main street. But, you know, there's lots of, there's lots and lots and lots of different ways to, to execute an excellent open house. Just use your creativity. But remember, the focus of every good open house is to make sales. So it's not just how you, you know, coming up with creative ways to not be idle, you know, spending your time uh, doing something so you're not bored. That is a big concern of mine. But remember, eyes on the prize. The fact is, is that you're there to capture incoming people to make sales. Keep your focus on that and you know, hopefully the people will show up and you'll be successful. But definitely uh, open houses, good idea. That's my, that's my manufactured home tip of the day. Go open houses. Do them. Get sales. Bring, bring people in there. Get your best houses and get them sold. Everybody, I got to get out of here because I got a big day ahead of me. Well, I'm already at 13 minutes. Hey, listen, once again, manufacturedhomemart.com. Go there for selling manufactured homes or even putting them up for rent. If you're looking to buy or rent or if you're a professional in the manufactured home business, you should definitely be visiting manufacturedhomemart.com. Everybody, have a great Monday, and we'll see you tomorrow, Tuesday, 9 a.m. Mountain and Pacific Time. Thank you so much. Have a good one, everybody. Bye-bye.